happens when you complete something and you continue to get messages about it? Have you ever been in a meeting and got the reminder for the meeting? You're at the place you're supposed to be and your phone or your computer is reminding you you should be there. Have you ever experienced the disdain of a teenager as you remind them to do something they've already done? Reminders can be useful when you've not done something, but when you have, they're annoying, and when done by a person who should know better, they're disrespectful. It drives a wedge into the relationship. It's a standard practice in corporations to leverage the all distribution list to reach everyone in the organization. After all, it's easy. One thing to remember, and you can reach out to everyone. What happens when your message isn't appropriate for everyone? Whether it's the cake in the break room and you chose to work from home today, or the survey you've already filled out, getting messages that don't apply to you is common in most organizations. Some level of grace is appropriate. After all, how is one of your coworkers supposed to know that you've chosen to work from home? However, on the other hand, the fourth reminder to fill out the employee satisfaction survey even though you responded the first time, is enough to make you want to change your answers. The problem is that this is the standard practice in most organizations. We tend to use the all distribution list because it's too easy. Excluding people who've already responded is tricky. The traditional tools we work with, Word, Excel, and Outlook, don't make it easy to send messages to only those people who haven't responded. However, it is possible. There's a special kind of relationship that we can use to find all the items in one list that don't exist in another. It's called an anti-join, and it's supported in Excel, even though it's kind of hard to set up. We've provided an Excel workbook called Remove Responders that makes this process easy. All you have to do is provide a list of the people that you have emailed initially, all the people that should respond, including their first names and their email address. This is done in the master list sheet. Second, we go to the responses sheet and paste in a list of the email addresses for all the people who have responded to your first mailing, or who've filled out the survey, or who've completed the benefits re-enrollment, or whatever it is. Finally, you go to the non-responder sheet, on, click the data tab, and press refresh all. The results will be a list of first names and email addresses of the people who haven't responded. With the list of email addresses, you can go into Word, prepare your message, and select the Remove Responders Workbook, and select its Non-Responders Worksheet as the data source. From there, you can insert the first name of the person into the message to personalize it, and then mail merge your message to send individual emails to everyone who hasn't yet responded. The result is a personalized message to only those people who need it, and nobody is upset because you didn't care enough to recognize that they'd already done what you asked of them. If you're feeling ignored by the people that you communicate with, perhaps a good question to ask is why they're ignoring you. Some of it can be the busy world we find ourselves in, or some of it may be that they feel like you're communicating irrelevant information. This is particularly true if you're sending them reminders for things they've already done. If you can move to communicating only to those who haven't responded, you can create more strongly worded messages, stop annoying the people who are your supporters, and get better results.